Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at what makes a good and not so good photo for Match Photo. So we've done a handful of videos that show Match Photo and how, to, how that works, how to import a file, how to line up the lines and everything. I'll link to a couple of them down in the comments, or the description, excuse me, when I get this posted. But what I really wanted to do was spend a little bit of time looking at some some images that I created, some, some pictures I took, and which ones are good and which ones are not good, and how you should go about taking a picture if you want to use it for Match Photo. Let's take a look at how that works right now. All right, so I'm going to import a couple different images. Uh, I'm going to just, just to keep the slate clean, I'm going to start a new model for every import just to show you guys how, how it works. We're not gonna go into actually importing and modeling so much. Like I said, I'll link to the files down below or some, some uh, videos below that show that process. What I wanna do is just look at a couple of images and why some of them work and some of them don't. So I'm gonna go to File, Import, and I'm going to look at the files I have here. I took a bunch of pictures and I wanted to look at what does make good. So I have this one called Ideal. That's We're gonna end with Ideal. We're gonna go out on a good note. We're gonna start with this one called Bad One. <laughs> and we'll see why I have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. I'm gonna make sure I have Use As Match Photo turned on. I'm gonna import it. All right, some of you are looking at this and going, yeah, that's not gonna work. But you would be surprised how many people have images like this wanting to know why Match Photo doesn't work for this. So Match Photo works, if you look at these lines, see how these lines are disappearing towards the back? Match photo works by taking the vanishing points and the change of geometry to match your modeling space to this geometry. This doesn't have vanishing points. We're looking straight at this picture would be great if I wanted to apply it to a model to make it look like this building. But for match photo, I have to see two sides and I have to see vanishing points. So this is terrible. This is not what you want to have when you look at match photo. Definitely want to be seeing something from the side. And I want to point out, I'm using this, I've used this building before. It's just a building uh, utility shed that's near where I live. It's nice for match photo because it gets rid of slopes and it only has straight lines and very clear cut, easy to see lines. Um, match photo, of course, works with far more complex buildings, but this is a very clear illustration of how match photo should be working. So this model, it doesn't matter. I could move this over to this line. I could align my green lines to one side of this building, but I can't go any further than that because I can't see the other side. So no matter what I do, at best, I have a surface. This won't work for Match Photo. All right, let's start a new one. I'm gonna go File New. You can also just, I don't know if everybody knows this, but you can start a new Match Photo from the Match Photo window by hitting a little plus right here. Same dialog, same thing comes up, but let's, uh, let's grab the next one. Go ahead and click open. All right, some of you are looking at this and going, I know what's wrong here. So the issue here is uh, I took several of these pictures with just my iPhone and my iPhone has two separate lenses on it. One is the standard, which is what uh, the good, spoiler alert, that's what the good picture is taken with. And one of them is a kind of a fisheye, well, more wide angle. So as, as you look at this, you can almost see, see how much, more exaggerated this this front and back are than over here so it kind of kind of I almost have this swoop that comes up depending on the severity of that swoop depending on how exaggerated the fisheye has made it so you can see here this is not the worst but you can kind of see how th this this concrete dips down just a little bit below the straight line this is going to be, it, 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 it's not going to, this, like I said, it's not super exaggerated in this example, but I can see, same, same thing there, you can see, see the, the blue coming through between where my line is and where that concrete is? That means that this one is just, it won't work out. This will, I'll get, I can get, probably get close enough since it's not terribly exaggerated, but this fisheye, this exaggerated uh, zoom is going to cause issues and I'm not going to get a perfect alignment between geometry and the image. I'll have these little little gaps. This this won't line up perfectly. 
So you want to make sure that when you're using a lens, it's not distorting like this. It's an issue with lenses on like small shallow lenses like you see on a phone because it doesn't have the big depth between one lens to the next. Uh, they're very shallow, so it's easier to kind of just have a wide lens to get more in. It can cause a little bit of an issue. So if you see an image like this, just be conscious that you might be able to make it work, but it's not the ideal image for match photo. All right, let's keep going. Uh, one of the questions that always comes up whenever we talk about imagery is what about drone footage? Well, let's look at some drone footage. All right, so one of the nice things about drones, of course, is when you get drone footage, you get to see the roof, right? A lot of the images we take from the ground mean we're looking up at the roof. So depending, drone footage actually ends up being no different from standard footage in a lot of ways. Primarily in that if you're using a camera that is not going to cause distortion, drone footage can be awesome. Depending on the lens, if I use, use a lens that, uh, you know, that does squish stuff down, it can cause a little more of an issue. You can see what this drone footage is looking at from above. This works pretty well. Now there are limitations, right? Cause, cause it is taken from a drone because, oh, look at the little shadow of the drone. Because it's from above and looking down, I don't get to see stuff like, uh, it's harder for me to see like where the door is. I can't actually see the underside of this overhang. So I'm guessing a little bit, but overall drone footage can be very, very useful and can actually make a good match photo if the lens you're taking from is not distorting anything, it's keeping everything fairly clean, um, and it's taken from the right angle. If this was a directly overhead image, it might be a great reference image for a sloped roof, right? If I was looking straight down on my house, I wanted to match the roof, great reference photo, but not necessarily a good match photo. This one, however, turned out pretty good. All right, let's look at something that's not so good. Start one, another new one. And uh, I'm going to import the worst possible scenario. Maybe not the worst. I'm sure there's there's worse than this. But uh, yeah, this is definitely not a good one. And we see it a lot. All right. So right away, when you look at this, uh, <clears throat> people who are used to 3D modeling will look at this and go, what? There's definitely an issue here. So what happened with this is this was sort of an attempt to use photo editing to create an isometric view. So in this case, my, my lines here, here, here are pretty close to equal, which means the vanishing that photo match relies on isn't going to work. So this, this kind of thing, this is an exaggerated view. I mean, on this little tiny building, I don't know why anybody would go in and do something stupid like this other, other than myself, uh, but I'm only doing it to prove a point. Um, this happens all the time with larger buildings. People take pictures of like skyscrapers, tall buildings. And when you take a picture from a, uh, a sky, you know, a multi-story building, a 20, 30 story building from below and you look up, it, it's going to taper upwards. So what people will do is they'll use photo editing software to make the sides of the building rather than go towards each other, be perfectly straight, which kind of pulls them out, distorts the geometry. It looks good in, in an image of a building, but you can see what happens when I bring it here to photo match. If I try to align it, look at, look at this should be vertical. That's not even close to vertical because I've, I've distorted the geometry as much as I have. So you see this a lot uh, when like pulling stock photos of glamour shots of buildings, uh, which makes sense because, you know, most people who are, are taking a photo of a, of a famous building and publishing it aren't doing it so you can get a good match photo set up in SketchUp. I know how rude they're doing it. So the, the, building itself looks good in the picture. So it happens a lot. And unfortunately it does kind of ruin the ability to use that photo as a match photo. See, yeah, see how this is, this is not the way stuff should look. All right, so let's do one last image here. And this is the how to do it right. So I'm gonna go ahead and import again. And I'm gonna use this one right here. All right, so this photo was taken from pretty close to ground, so a few feet up from ground level. Uh, it was taken, the center of the photo, pretty close to the middle, is this edge coming towards me. 
This is taken with a lens that does not distort the geometry, hardly at all. And you can see, almost immediately, as, as I'm starting to line this up, you can see the vanishing points, right? So you see how that corner that's near me is much taller. This line right here is way bigger than what I have on either side. That's the vanishing I'm talking about. That's what is super important for match photo. That's basically how match photo functions, is those vanishing lines. So you can actually see as I'm putting, dragging my, my uh, points around, and you can see how it's setting up my grid to match and align. And look at that, when I get my, when I get my green point, my second green point in there, you can see how that lines up and this, this vertical line shows up perfectly. You can scale it so it's about the right size. This is how a photo should be taken. So again, not on one side, not at an exaggerated, uh, you know, wide angle lens, not necessarily high up from above. This is, makes the perfect photo for match photo. Don't you love when content creators spend the whole time showing you how not to do something and then right at the end they're like, and then do it right. Um, there's a point for that, you know, I, I guess. I don't know. This is the way it worked out. Hopefully that helps. If you've ever had a photo come in and you've tried to use Match Photo and it hasn't worked, uh, I would be interested to hear if these were the things you ran into or if there was something else. Let me know if I missed anything, if there's any type of photo or type of setup for a picture that causes match photo to not work. I would love to hear that. Tell me in the comments down below. Uh, and if you haven't already, please do like, subscribe, and maybe even suggest this to somebody else. Um, if you have an idea for a video like this, let us know about that in the comments too. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.